How has it been for you this week? All over the place? Up and down, high and low, here and there. Orange shirt Sunday and Monday, but not exactly sure what to wear or how to be on any of the other days? Welcome to Worship at Jubilee, where we come together to make sense of our lives, to see and be seen, to value and be valued, to come to the table hungry and walk away full, to act justly and lovingly in the world and be reminded again and again that we are not alone. We are in this together.
Good news? Well, the good news is that the Forest Grove property has been sold and will be maintained as a religious facility. The land and building are now the property of the Lingyan Mountain Temple, a Chinese Buddhist community for British Columbia who are very glad to be able to grow their community in the Toronto area. The even better news is that the proceeds from this sale will provide millions of dollars to support the ministries and communities of the Shining Waters region of the United Church of Canada and provide seed money so that Jubilee can continue to grow our ministry to our immediate community, the digital community, and of course, the Grove Music School. The Grove Music School is off to a great start with 50 students, seven teachers, and it has fit very well into the life of Jubilee. Not only that, both students and teachers are really glad to be here. And that is really good news. Welcome to the Jubilee community and our digital Sunday service. The themes and the scripture are very similar to the Jubilee in-person service, but this service is created specifically for you, our digital community. You are unique, and together with the in-person community, we are all Jubilee. Whether you connect digitally all the time or some of the time, join us in person often, once in a while, or, or never, you belong. You help to determine who we are and how we do things. You are the people who share what we do with friends, the things that we put on TikTok and Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Here's one that took off recently. Do you remember in John's Gospel, chapter 8, we heard the story about the woman who was caught in adultery? Right, and everyone got there ready to stone her, and they asked Jesus about it, and he said, you know, you without sin cast the first stone, and of course everybody, well, they dropped their stones and they went away. But then Jesus said to the woman, to go and sin no more. Now, do you think that meant that she should go and not do bad things ever again? Or do you think maybe he was trying to say to her, go and live your life and never mind what these judgmental so-and-sos have to say about how you live your life? Hmm. I'm not sure, but it does make me wonder. Ask the next question. It's the faithful thing to do. Thank you for helping to shape us as you share what we do, contribute your thoughts and ideas, and together we live into this relationship that we have with each other and with God. By the way, you can stick around for, or fast forward to, the end of our service for announcements, opportunities to get involved, and ways that you can offer financial support to this ministry that we share. We are one with those who are disabled and shut out of what many simply take for granted. We are gay, lesbian, bi, trans, queer, two-spirited, binary, non-binary, fluid, cis, hetero. We are an emerging diversity with differing experiences, perspectives, and wisdom that combine to tell the deeper, broader, and glorious stories of humanity, of faith, and of God. These stories cannot be fully told without us, all of us. Many of us were born on the land where we live. Some of us came here by choice. Some of us were brought here or are descended from those who had no choice but to be here. 
Some of us are descended from those who have been here for longer than history can account. We acknowledge the First Peoples to be on and with this land, their wisdom, spirit, and spirituality that stretches from the distant past into the present day. The Jubilee United Church building is in Toronto, land that has nurtured and shaped the Wendat, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa, the Mississaugas of the New Credit, and all who entered into the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant of 1701 to share and nurture the land together for mutual sustenance. Settlers came into this land agreeing to the covenant, but not honoring it. And those of us who are settlers and descended from settlers acknowledge the crime and the pain of residential schools, injustice and systemic racism that continues to this day. We commit ourselves to seeing and knowing the people who welcomed our ancestors to this land, to exploring deeply the issues that confront Indigenous peoples today, and to learning from the wisdom and medicine that our many and varied Indigenous nations, tribes, and cultures offer us as we work together for a tomorrow that is better than today. Together, we are committed to sharing and writing the stories of humanity, of faith, and of God. And we are very glad that you are part of the story of Jubilee. Monday, September the 30th, is recognized as Orange Shirt Day across Canada. Today we take a moment to reflect on this day with the moderator of the United Church of Canada. Greetings. I'm the Right Reverend Dr. Carmen Lansdowne, moderator of the United Church of Canada. September 30th, we observe the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. We witness and honor the healing journey of survivors and families of the residential school experience, and we remember those who didn't make it home. Phyllis Webstad, founder and ambassador of Orange Shirt Day, is a residential school survivor and community leader who continues to raise awareness of Every Child Matters by sharing stories of the individual, family, and community intergenerational impacts of the residential school experience. Orange Shirt Day is not to be celebrated as a holiday. It is a day to reflect, to learn, and to pray about the continued impact of colonial policies and governance in what we now call Canada. Whether you attended one of the schools, whether you're an intergenerationally affected relative like me, a granddaughter of a survivor, whether you're a parent left behind or a non-Indigenous person in Canada who is fed a false history, Orange Shirt Day means every child matters. Indian residential schools operated in Canada between the 1870s and the 1990s. The last Indian residential school closed in 1996. Between 1925 and 1969, the United Church of Canada operated a total of 15 institutions within the Indian Act system as a part of the federal government's policy of assimilating Indigenous peoples. The Heltzuk Joint Leadership of hereditary chiefs and elected chief and councillors have called not for reconciliation, but for a concept in our language called Hirsistut, or to turn around and make things right. It is not about reconciling two parties who have harmed each other, but non-Indigenous accountability for harms done to Indigenous people in the name of the Church, in the name of the Crown, and as a society that has normalized Euro-Christian whiteness. As members of a church that operated residential institutions, every member of the United Church of Canada is accountable for learning about the tragic and painful legacy of the institutions and how it continues to impact the lives of Indigenous peoples across the country. Children in those institutions suffered physical, sexual, emotional, spiritual, and cultural abuse. This resulted in the Indian Residential Schools Settlement Agreement, 
which included the creation of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. Its final report and calls to action make clear that there is still a very long journey ahead of us as we seek to make things right. Racist or colonial policies continue to harm Indigenous children and their families. They manifest in inequitable funding for education and injustices are perpetrated under the Indigenous Child Welfare Act. On September 30th, and every day, we must remember that every child matters. One way we can be proactive in showing Indigenous young people that they matter is by investing in the Wase Abin program. This program awards annual scholarships for post-secondary education to Indigenous students ages 18 to 29 who demonstrate financial need and academic excellence. I hope you will join me with millions of other Canadians, Indigenous and non-Indigenous alike, and spend time in reflection, prayer and action on this National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Wallace Gaeska, Every Child Matters. For our small part, Jubilee United Church provides space for Indigenous groups without rental cost, and we provide financial support to the Toronto Urban Native Ministry. If you would like to make a donation to support the Toronto Urban Native Ministry, a ministry that provides cultural support for Indigenous folk living in Toronto, as well as life-saving support for Indigenous folk living in poverty and high-risk conditions, you can simply make a donation to Jubilee in whatever manner you usually do, and mark the donation orange, and we will add it to our ongoing financial support for the Toronto Urban Native Ministry. As we open ourselves up to the truth of our history and the hope of our future, we share the light of Christ. Reading from James chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. 
Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being just like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from the wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Reading from Mark chapter 9, verses 38 to 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another.
Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your eyes. And God, may I never lightly presume to preach your word. And may we never lightly presume to hear your word. For in your word is abundant life. Amen. Isn't that a lovely song? Fairest Lord Jesus, beautiful and earthly, wondrously Jesus is found in Thee. None can be nearer, fairer or dearer than Thou, my Savior, art to me. You really mountain do it for me. That's that me espresso. Something like that, I think. I, I may be mixing songs up. I don't know. 17th century words, 19th century tune. Ugh, I love the modern stuff. <laughs> A perfect companion to Jesus telling us to cut off our hands. Don't you think? <laughs> Switch it up like Nintendo. But before we jump ahead, let's just set the story, okay? The lads have come to Jesus all in a tizzy. They get that way sometimes. Because there's someone out there casting out demons, using Jesus' name. But he didn't know Jesus. And they certainly didn't know him. He wasn't on the team. He didn't have the right education, the right affiliation, didn't know the secret handshake, didn't have the team jersey. So, so they took it upon themselves, the lads, to stop him, shut him down. After all, what, what good could he possibly be doing if he wasn't doing it right? And you know what Jesus said to them? I mean, we know what Jesus should have said to them. What a modern, in step with the world, you know, bop into Sabrina Carpenter, Jesus would have said to them. He would have said, oh, well done, my good and faithful servants. If that man is not part of the Jesus government, the Christ nation, the grand old faith, we do not want him messing around. If he isn't on side with us and against all the things that we're against, if he isn't liberal and open-minded enough or, or, or conservative and wise enough, well, then we don't want him out there doing good works because we have a name to defend, a brand to establish. And if you're not on side, get out of the way. That's what a, what a modern throwing endorsements around Jesus would have said. And we've heard it all before, haven't we? If you're not for us, you're against us. We hear that a lot these days, don't we? But instead of saying that, this politically naive, backwards, ancient vinyl record guy, he said, what's the big deal? Whoever's not against us is for us. So completely out of step in a world of choose your side and stay on it no matter what. Don't ever listen to the other side or imagine that your opponent might have something to offer or might actually want good things for others. <laughs> no, no, no. How crazy would it be if people actually treated others like we're all in the same family? A family that transcends teams. What if we actually respected each other's efforts, welcomed help without some kind of partisan vetting system. I'm sorry, you come from the wrong side. You can't possibly do a good thing with us. What if we let all that go? <laughs> Elections would be different. Oh, wow. Speeches, the ads would be very different. Our history of residential schools, colonialism would be different. When people used to say, I can't believe that you're a minister, I assumed that it was because I was so good looking. But now I think that it might be that they can't believe that people believe this kind of stuff anymore. 
They're not used to hearing this from ministers. You mean, you mean as a person of faith, you actually believe that we can listen to each other? We don't have to pick sides. You don't have to destroy the infidels that we actually could all be somehow sharing God? I want to say, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You'd be surprised at what, what faith can really be. It's not what you think it is. And just as I'm on the verge of, 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 of getting them to see the benefits of a faith that allows you to see, well, opponents as family, let you sort of open up and just relax a little bit, Jesus goes on about self-mutilation. Man, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. And honestly, I don't know how that works. I've never stumbled over my hand. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. I get how that works. I don't like it. If your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. And I have to acknowledge that, you know, it, it's... It's actually a little refreshing that Jesus is putting the responsibility on the one with the eye and not blaming the object of desire. Imagine that. <laughs> Better to lose an eye, we're told, a foot or a hand, than to be thrown into hell. Which does sound a little drastic, a little gothic horror to me. <sighs> and frankly, a little bit impossible, right? And just as I'm trying to sort all of that out, the person who was listening to me talk about, you know, what faith can really be like in this modern day and age and family, and fa he, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> but who can blame them? I mean, honestly, if your hand causes you to stumble, <sighs> well, you see, Your Honor, I'm not responsible for hitting that man because it was, uh, it was my hand that did it. And you can't hold me responsible for what my hand, the crimes of my hand. It, it's my hand. If your eye causes you to stumble. There was a glorious wedding last week. Oh. In the midst of that wedding, I, I, I had a moment, you know, the beginning of their marriage and the two of them building their future together. And it's just all hope and love and possibility. And as I'm watching the two of them, I, I remember the day that I got married. And then for a brief moment, I was envious. I was envious of their youth and their beginning of a journey. I looked at them and I looked at them with envy. Should I have done something about that? I mean, it would have changed the feeling of the wedding, I gotta tell you that for sure, because people, well, people would have talked about it. Oh, the bride, oh, she was beautiful, and the groom was so handsome, and we all loved the music, and oh, and of course, the minister ripped his eye out, so, you know, there was that. That was, that was different. <laughs> no, it, it, it doesn't make any sense, all this self-mutilation, and, and, and honestly, it's costing me friends on Facebook. So sometimes I just wish that Jesus would Shut up, just a little bit. And then I remember seven, eight years ago, my wife was laid off and she called me with the news. Just called me, I answered the phone in my office. She said, yeah, I've been laid off. I'm going home. I, I wasn't expecting that call. I wasn't expect, she wasn't expecting it. And so I, I just, I just, I, I dropped everything I was doing. I hurried to be home with her. I mean, I wanted, I wanted to hold her in this time of emotional fragility and, and grief, you know, the way a good partner does. And, I, and I, I, I raced home safely, and I got there just in time for her to open the champagne. <laughs> She'd wanted out for years. The job was wearing her down. And I'm not decrying the whole automobile sales industry, but the sexism and the bad management and the dishonesty that she experienced was just hard on her. It just wore her down. But she's also that person who's never going to quit because quitting is giving up. Quitting is letting them win. Quitting is defeat, and nobody likes a quitter. And so I wonder if it might have helped if Jesus had talked to my wife, looked into her tired eyes, her frayed soul, and said, if your job is sucking the life out of you, 
if it diminishes you every day because it's making you into somebody that you don't want to be, then quit. If your job has you stumbling through life like a zombie, then cut it off. Better to be making less money, no money even, than to feel like you're living in hell each and every workday. Maybe Jesus shouldn't shut up. Maybe we should listen. You know, I have a friend who ended a marriage and not because they had a, a fight or that his partner doesn't understand him. It wasn't that. This marriage ended after 10 years of deep dysfunction. 10 years of damaging each other, hurting and disrespecting each other. And when the subject of divorce would come up over the years, his response was always, I'm not giving up on this marriage. I am not going to be one of those people who gets divorced. The partner would not go into any kind of counseling, would not work on the marriage, so my friend worked on it alone and suffered alone and felt more and more alone. And now that it's over, he can't believe how alive he feels and how foolish he feels for not having done something earlier. I, I wonder what would have happened if Jesus had talked with him, just looked into his eyes and his frayed soul and said, if your relationship is sucking the life out of you, if it diminishes you every day because it offers you no nurture, no respect, no joy, no hope, then it's time to go. Better to be one of those divorced people than to live in a hell of loneliness and isolation. I'm glad that Jesus doesn't shut up. And I'm glad that my friend listened. It's pretty crazy advice though, I have to admit. I remember having a conversation some years ago with a former moderator of the United Church of Canada. She was actually a moderator at the time, Jordan Cantwell. And we were talking about truth and reconciliation and about our relationship with indigenous folk in Canada and also in the context of the church. And she acknowledged that the injustice, the racism, the disparity wasn't really hurting her. And it isn't hurting me in any way that people can see. In fact, I, I'm benefiting in so many ways that it's staggering. But as she said to me, but it's rotting my soul. And ever since she said that, I realize it, it rots mine as well. I wonder what Jesus would say. Actually, no, I don't have to wonder. It's in the gospel. If your foot causes you to stumble, then cut it off. If your indifference is killing your neighbors, stop it. If your politics, your comfort, your fear, your confusion, your anger is causing your soul to rot, to slowly diminish, then make a change. Better to lose something that you're used to than to rot. I love working with interns and students, I really do. People feeling called, you know, by God into ministry. And I have spent countless weeks, months, exploring with them the nature of their call. And I truly believe I've loved every moment of it. I've also been on those teams that, you know, interview and, and, and affirm those calls, right? Because you want a, an outward affirmation of what you feel inside. And sometimes, every now and again, even though we don't want to, we don't affirm those calls. I mean, nobody wants to be told no. They've invested so much time and effort and so much hope. But sometimes others just don't see the call, don't see the skills, don't see the potential for, for good ministry. And so sometimes we have to say no to protect the people of the church. And I remember one time that I had to deliver the no. I chaired that interview group, and I had to be the one to say to her, 
No. After four years of this, no. And the joy and the relief on her face was so profound. She cried. She thanked me. She thanked us all. Because she had come to realize that she was not called into ministry. It really wasn't right for her. But she'd come so far in the process. And people, well, people were counting on her. After all, they'd supported her. They'd helped her along the way. She did not want to let them down. She didn't want to look like somebody who didn't know what she was doing with her life. Always changing her mind. But then having been freed of all of that, she felt like she'd been let out of prison. Out of hell, if you want to be dramatic. And her overwhelming feeling was gratitude. But so often we deny ourselves that feeling, don't we? We keep at the things that torture us and others because, well, well, because people are counting on us. Because, because it would be painful to quit, almost like cutting off a hand. And we don't want to go through life without a hand. We don't want to be lesser people because we've failed or given up. We don't want to be one of those people speaks more than a little bit to our ableism, too. Imagining that somehow going through life without something we're used to makes us lesser beings. <laughs> and after all, when you think about it, Jesus told us that we are the salt of the earth. We can't quit. We can't give up. He said it before, and he says it again in this gospel. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, well, how can you season it? So have salt in yourselves. Be at peace in one another. Jesus said that. Nobody wants to be weak salt. So we keep at it. We want to be good salt. We want to add flavor. We want to preserve things. We don't want to be divorced salt or unemployed salt or, or lesser salt. That's why we can't. We simply can't give up. And that's why we won't give up, even, even if our heads and our hearts tell us to. Even if our lives feel like hell, we're salt, and we will not lose our saltiness. It's our job, it's our responsibility to be as salty as we can. And we forget the most important thing about salt. <laughs> it's always salty. Saltiness does not fade. 100-year-old salt is salty. So is a thousand-year-old salt. In fact, they're equally salty. A big rock of salt, chopped up salt, finely ground salt is all salty. Divorced salt, unemployed salt, sad salt, imperfect salt, foolish salt, wounded salt, reconciled salt is salty. Nothing can take the saltiness away. No matter what you've done, no matter your mistakes or your choices, you are salt. You are lovable. You are of value to the world. You add flavor to everything. So you know what? Sometimes it makes sense to cut yourself off from that which is killing you. Because you will always be salt. Kitchen chemistry proves it. Jesus said so. <sighs> Man, is he ever out of touch with the world, eh? <laughs> Thanks be to God. No, really. The Jesus sounds like he's out of touch with the modern world. Thanks be to God. Let's listen to him. Let us pray. Loving, precious God, we are many people with many prayers, many worries, concerns, hopes, and dreams. But in this moment, we focus our prayers. Powerful Christ, we are grateful that you came to us as a child. 
who grew out of a community that nurtured, supported, and taught you the way of your ancestors. You have asked us to do the same, to treat every child as we would treat you, to love every person as you have loved us. We are grateful that your power is rooted in love, not force. Your strength is displayed through community, not might. You have taught us to work toward a better world where all of creation thrives and where every child matters. On Orange Shirt Day, we remember Phyllis Webstad as a child and the stolen childhood of all the children forcibly raised by church-run institutions known as residential schools. We lament how these institutions stole from children the opportunity to grow in a safe and loving environment. Stole from elders the opportunity to share their teachings and wisdom with younger generations. And stole from communities the opportunity to live intergenerationally. We mourn the children who never made it home. The communities that were destroyed the broken hearts, the stories never shared, and the shattered relationships. We ask God that you provide comfort to all who are seeking healing and who daily wrestle with the ongoing harmful legacy of these colonial institutions. Strength to all who name how colonial powers have harmed us as peoples and as a nation, often at great personal cost and courage to all who are working toward reconciliation. Christ child, as you grew, you reminded us to always welcome and care for children. We remember your children today. We lament and acknowledge the sinful ways that colonial powers try to eradicate indigenous cultures within Canada, breaking indigenous families removing children from their homes while destroying communities. And Creator, we pray for healing so that we who live together in this country can also work together to build a better future where all children are cherished, beloved, and given what they need to survive. So that we may treat all children as we would treat you our beloved. May it always be so. We offer our prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Go out from this moment and into the world and, and be salty. Recognize that whoever you are, however you are, you are loved. You are valued by God. You are salt. You are salty. And so are all the people around you. Their saltiness does not detract from yours. So go out, connect, and, and be salty together. Live a salty life. Live in a salty world. And know that as you do, God the Creator is with you. 
Know that Jesus walks with you, walks with us all. And know that the Holy Spirit absolutely surrounds and fills each and every one of us. Until we gather again in person or virtually, amen. Now that we have worshipped and wondered, let's see how we might live in the world. The Jubilee 5K is less than a week away. Our fifth fundraising walk for the many ministries of Jubilee is this Saturday, October the 5th. And this year, we're all starting at the same time, 1 p.m. And you know what? It's not too late to register to walk or to volunteer. You can also sponsor walkers and the event itself. And of course, we're hoping that you're going to come out and join us for the walk and the barbecue as well. So you can sign up for the walk, you can volunteer, and you can sponsor all of that on the Jubilee website. It's under the events tab at www.jubileeunited.ca. And now, your ministers want to make it interesting. Reverend Ann and Reverend Norm, that's me, Reverend Norm, well, we've decided that whoever has the most money pledged by the time we walk will walk dressed as either Charlie Brown or Lucy. Now, if we have over $500 combined pledges, we will both walk in costume. 
And if we raise $750 combined, we'll also come to Tuesday Coffee in costume. And if somehow we raise over $1,000 in pledges, we will lead Sunday worship together in costume. So please, don't let your ministers maintain their dignity. Seriously, sponsor us on the walk, knowing that your money will support our refugee fund and make it possible, well, make it possible for you to laugh at us. I mean, laugh with us. Right, that's what it is. This is a reminder that next Sunday, October the 6th, we will have a service for the blessing of the animals at Jubilee, in person and online. We are looking forward to recognizing and blessing our animal companions and friends. And we're also happy to bless stuffed animals as we celebrate the legacy of St. Francis of Assisi next Sunday. You're invited to bring your well-behaved or well-contained animal to church on Sunday. And there will be personal blessings before the service and also after the service, as well as a corporate blessing during the service. And we will also bless a picture of your animal and we will bless your stuffed animals. We also encourage you to send a picture of your animal so that we can include it in our digital service and also for a photo montage to be shared at Jubilee. November the 3rd, we will be receiving and celebrating new members at Jubilee. If you're interested in joining Jubilee, well, you can sign up on the Table of Opportunities or you can contact the church office at 416-447-6846 or admin at jubileeunited.ca. You can contact either of your ministers and you can join us for pizza and chat on Wednesday, October the 16th at Jubilee. What does it mean to join Jubilee? Well, talk to Reverend Ann, talk to me, join us on Wednesday, October the 16th and we'll figure it all out together. The Jubilee Refugee Committee supports a very special fundraiser for the Don Valley Refugee Resettlers. The DVRR do wonderful work supporting refugees in our area and we are part of their organization. To that end, we will be selling amaryllis kits for $15. And you can get amaryllis in red, white, pink, red and white, pink and white. We're also gonna be selling Balsam Lake honey for $11 and $21. So you can order your amaryllis and honey by calling the church office or signing up on the table of opportunities in the church foyer. Honey and flower kits will be available for pickup at Jubilee by the end of November. And if that's not enough, how about a bus trip to Niagara on the lake? Tuesday, October the 29th, leaving from Jubilee and heading to Niagara on the lake with a visit to the Caroline Cellars Winery for wine tasting and lunch, some time to shop and explore downtown Niagara on the lake, and also some sightseeing around the Niagara River and escarpment. All of this from a very comfortable air conditioned coach. Tickets are only $120 each, and we will be selling only 45 tickets. Last year, we sold out, so please don't delay. You can purchase tickets or reserve your spot by calling the Jubilee Church office at 416-447-6846. And of course, Jubilee bee pics continue to come in, as well as pet pictures for next week and pictures of grandchildren for Thanksgiving Sunday. So please, keep them all coming. And as the colors of fall begin to emerge around you, well, we'd love to have pictures of them as well. And let's not forget about limericks, five lines of wit, whimsy, wisdom, or whatever. We want to hear what you're thinking. We want you to make us think, make us smile. We are waiting. Pictures and limericks can all be sent to me at ncli at jubileeunited.ca. And finally, thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your openness and thank you for your daring. Thank you for your gifts and thank you for your needs. Each of us comes to Jubilee with gifts to share, but also needs to be met. And we believe that God calls us together to support each other and also to look outward and make a positive difference in the world, to inspire hope and to nurture love. So thank you for your volunteering and donating, for your walking and sponsoring for coming to coffee or inviting friends to church. Thank you for your smiles and your ideas, your efforts and your understanding. And thank you for your prayers and support as we do our best to live boldly in the world. Your financial gifts are one of the gifts that you offer. And it's not a participation fee or even an obligation. It's simply part of what you can share with the community and the wider world. 
your help, we continue to reach out and build community digitally and personally, intentionally, and sometimes just by being who we are. However you choose to support Jubilee with regular donations through PAR, that's pre-authorized remittance, one-time or ongoing donations through e-transfer, through Canada Helps, or delivered directly to the church or some kind of legacy gift. Whatever your investment, please know that we see it as an affirmation and inspiration to the whole community. It is an act of love. So thank you for making Jubilee a home for all of God's children, including you. Thank you for making Jubilee home.